Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a setup guide for Crucial's P310, a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD, which we're going to install into a new PC, or alternatively to use as an additional drive in your system. I'm going to show you how to install it on the motherboard, and then how to use it in Windows, how to set it up and get it recognized. I'm going to use a couple of different motherboards for demonstration purposes, but the logic will be the same. On most modern motherboards, you'll find a large heat sink on the top slot near the CPU. And I'd recommend using this if you only have one drive in your system because it will help make sure the drive runs cool and it runs at its maximum speed. You can see these motherboards, the cover removes with a couple of clips. Sometimes it's held in place with a screw, but an important point is you'll find there is a plastic sticker cover and a thermal pad underneath. You need to make sure you remove that. Alternatively, there are other slots on your motherboard. You'll see down the bottom of this tough gaming motherboard, for example, there's a black heat shield down the bottom there, which you can unscrew and remove. You may well find that there are multiple points on the motherboard where you can install drives, so you might be able to install multiples of these if you want to, and this is an alternative to do that. But I would recommend using anywhere where there is a decent heat shielding like that. You can see me slotting the P310 into this slot down the bottom here and then just using the plastic clip that's included with this motherboard to seat it back into place. That's generally the installation process for a lot of modern motherboards. You might find that you have to use a screw instead of that clip and you usually find those included with your motherboard. So in the box for your motherboard you should find what's called an M2 screw that you can use to secure the drive down as an alternative. And then the heat shielding goes back over the top to protect the drive and to help dissipate the temperature. Notice that I didn't remove the stickers from the drive at all. Don't do that because they are actually thermally conductive and do help with cooling, so it is worth keeping them in place. But you do want to make sure the stickers are removed from the thermal pads around the heat shielding. Now, as I said, you've got several options on different motherboards. You'll find a variety of different positions where you can slot these drives in, but they are really easy to install. You'll notice there's a little plastic clip in the drive port. You just need to line that up and push your drive into place and then make sure it's fully secured with one of these latches or with an M2 screw, as I mentioned, and then just at the shieldings down over the top. You can potentially install this as an additional drive and I'm going to show you how to then set it up in Windows to get it recognized nice and easily or use it as your main operating system drive and I'm going to show you that later on as well so stick with me to see how to install Windows on this drive if that's the only drive in your system I'll help you with that. The other thing to be aware of is the lane usage on your motherboard and how much that might impact performance and I'll link to a separate video that I've done on that and what it means in the description but with your drives installed you can then seat your motherboard into your case although it is worth noting you can obviously do this if you can access those ports if your motherboard's already installed so you could in theory easily add one of these drives into your system as it stands you just need to make sure it's powered off and that you can access those ports they might be blocked by a graphics card for example but with that fully built, we're now going to go about the process of showing you a couple of things. So as I said, I'll show you how to set Windows up like this in a minute. But for now, I'm going to assume that you're putting in this in as an additional drive and you already have Windows installed and you just want to get the drive recognized. You might well find that when you first boot up, the drive just isn't there. So if we have a look at Windows Explorer, you'll see on this PC, I've got one drive and that's actually a Samsung drive but the crucial drive is not visible. If you have that instance, what you need to do is to open up the start menu and search for disk management. You're looking for create and format a hard disk partition. Click on that and it'll open up the disk management tool and hopefully you should see initialize disk pop up and it recognizes it there. So what you want to do is just click OK there. You'll notice there's now an additional disk in there, disk one, which is black. It's got a black bar on it. Right click on that and click new simple volume. We just basically need to go through the process of formatting this drive, giving it a label and a letter, and then Windows will recognize it. So you can see it's got drive letter D and then just give it a logical label so you know what drive it is. It doesn't really matter what you put in here, but I'm putting crucial P310 just so I know which drive it is. 
and then it'll format and you should find it then appears in Explorer like this. Pretty straightforward. If you find that these steps didn't work, it might well be a BIOS setting in your motherboard that you need to change in order to get that to be recognized properly. Unfortunately, that can vary from motherboard to motherboard, but basically you're looking for NVMe settings. Now, once you've got that installed, what I'd recommend doing is doing a speed test. You can download a free tool called Crystal Disk Mark, which you can see here. And you follow these steps, basically making sure the settings are the same, select the right drive, make sure it's in NVMe mode, and then click start. This basically runs a synthetic test on the drive to see what the read write speeds are on it. You know that it can get up to 7,000 megabytes per second, so we're looking for something around there. If you find it's getting a lot less, then it could be that you've installed it in the wrong port on your motherboard, or that you have some other problem with the lane usage, which is then causing issues where the drive's not got enough lanes to be able to then get maximum speed. You can see I've got Task Manager open on the right-hand side. It will also give me a readout of how much load it's under. And down the bottom of that, I've got the read-write speed as it is. And on the left-hand side, I'm using Hardware Info 64, which can be useful to track the temperatures. So you can see the drive highlighted here, the current temperature, what it's under, how much load it's got, and basically the overall max temperature that it reaches. This is good to make sure it's got a good level of cooling for it. Naturally, it should do if you've got that heat sink in place and you've got a decent amount of fans in your system. But if you're perhaps not doing that and you find that the drive's getting really high in temperatures, like 80 or above in terms of degrees, then that could be an issue. And that could be one of the things that's causing problems with the read-write speed. But by the end of the test, you can see I've got about 6,205 megabytes per second. So it's not reaching the maximum speed, but I'm not too worried because this is pretty close to it. So I don't think it's a major issue here or there's anything particularly to worry about. The point here is just to speed test and make sure that you're getting roughly the speeds that you should be getting. If you find that you've got half the amount of speeds, that's a place to be concerned about. That could be that you've put the drive into an older port, like PCIe Gen 3 port, for example, or the other drives in your system, if you've got loads of drives in there, sometimes that can reduce the number of lanes for some M2 ports on the motherboard and thereby impact the performance. One way to check this is to use Hardware Info 64 where you can get a look at the various different drives in the system. So you can see I've got two NVMe SSDs in this system, Samsung 9100 Pro and this crucial drive. If you go into the drive section, you can then click on the NVMe drive in question and you can have a look here. You'll see the drive controller, it's PCIe Gen 4. You can see it's got 16 giga transfers a second transfer speed and it's got four lanes. You can click into it and then see the PCIe version, which is Gen 4, and it's got a maximum bandwidth of four lanes as well, which is what it should have. So this is ideal. So you can just basically check that all of these things match up in your system. Now I'm going to show you how to go about installing Windows if this is the only drive in your system and that's what you want to do with it. On a separate PC, search for Windows Creation Tool and we're looking to create a Windows Media Creation Tool. And so you go over to this website and then you want this one, create a Windows 11 media installation. And then you open up the download, run the said download file. You need to have a separate USB stick for this, obviously, and a machine that you can do this on in the first place. Although you can do this on a phone. I've got a separate video about how to do that. And make sure you've got the right selections. And then you can see USB flash drive. It needs to be at least eight gigabytes and then click there. You can see that I've got a USB drive already set for this and plugged into this machine. And then you're basically going to run this tool and until it progresses and does a Windows media installation on that thumb drive. What you'll then do is insert that drive into the new PC. So I use a 32 gigabyte Toshiba drive for this, but you can use anything that's roughly that size. Plug it into the new PC and then just turn it on. So you just got to slot that in. I'm using the front ports on this. You can plug it into the motherboard if preferred and just turn your PC on and you should find that it automatically tries to boot from this drive. And so you'll have to wait a little minute, but you'll see it will first allow you to get to the BIOS and you should see a loading page for your motherboard and then eventually you get to the blue screen with the Windows installation process set up there. 
So for what we want to do here is basically go through and select your relevant language and location and other things. So in my case, I'm going to pick United Kingdom, but you might be in the States or somewhere else to so go about doing that. Then click Install Now. On the next page, you'll see an option to put in your product key if you've got a Windows key. I don't have that just to my hand right now, so you can click I don't have that now. You can install Windows without it and then activate Windows later on with the key. So click Next and click to accept the terms. And then you've got two options, Upgrade, which is to basically fix Windows installation if it's already there, and then Custom, which is the one you're going to want to use if you've got a new install. You should see the drive appearing here. If you've got a couple of different partitions on it like I have, you might want to delete those and format the drive. You should find that you don't have this if it's a brand new drive and a brand new install. But if you do, you can just do that, delete it, end up with one drive with unallocated space, click new and then apply that. And what it will do is it will put multiple partitions in it. Select the largest one so you can see partition three, for example, has the most space on it here and click next. It will then go about copying the Windows files and installing them. This can take some time, so I'm speeding up the process here so you don't have to watch the whole thing, but it does take a fair amount of time to go through this process. But at some stage during this, it will then go about installing features and updates. And then what you want to do is watch out for this next bit because then it will basically say that it's going to restart the PC. So you can see it says restart. At this point, pull that drive out with the Windows installation media on it. Otherwise, it will try and reboot from that and you'll just end up stuck in a loop. So then it will restart and then it will go back into carrying on installing. But what it's doing now is basically installing it from the drive. So it's put some of the elements onto the crucial drive and then you just basically follow the rest of the steps. So go through there and then eventually what might happen is you might get stuck on this section, which is connecting to a network. You might not have any Wi-Fi drivers installed. So what you need to do on a separate machine or on your phone, I've got a guide on this that I'll link to in the description, is head over to the relevant motherboard website, go to the support section, head over there and find the LAN and wireless drivers, depending on what you're using, whether you're using Ethernet or wireless. I'm downloading both because I want to install both of them, but it's up to you what you're going to install. And then obviously you need to open the folder on your PC or on your device. And then what we want to do is to put a blank or other USB drive into the spare machine that you're using to do this. And then what you want to do is make sure it's got no files on it, it's formatted and everything's deleted. And then what we're looking to do is to extract the files that you've downloaded for the Wi-Fi and LAN setup to that drive specifically. So for this MSRI drive, for example, I'm extracting those onto there. And you can see it's extracted a lot of different files in there. So with the LAN drivers, I'm just going to create a separate folder so there's no confusion. Put a LAN folder in there, go into that, and this is for the Ethernet drivers. Right click on it and click Extract All, go to Browse, then select the USB drive and extract the files onto there. You can then use this drive on your new PC to install the files. So pop that into the new PC. Then when you're back on this network page, press Shift and F10 on your keyboard. And what you should do is find that that then pops up a command window that looks like this. Make sure you click on it with your mouse and then type Explorer into there and hit Enter. And that should open Windows Explorer like this. You can then click on the USB drive and then click up the Setup and Install application and just run that. So you should find there's an application in there you can run to install the Wi-Fi drivers or the LAN drivers or both. And once that's done, just minimize these windows and then you should find that you've now got access to be able to connect to the network. So I'm gonna to connect to my home Wi-Fi network to carry on the installation process for this. So that's a pretty easy way to do that if you're having this problem where you can't connect to the Wi-Fi. I've got a separate guide that I'll link to in the description to show you how to do this with your phone if you haven't got a spare PC to be able to use because there is a different way to do it if you need it. But once you've got through that, you should then be able to go into the next steps of finalizing the install, choosing the different options and other things. You might well find that you need to log into your Microsoft account, create one if you haven't already, or log into that to back up from previous PCs or to create a new installation from scratch. I'm skipping a lot of steps here, but basically just read what's on the screen, select what's relevant to you, and then basically go about the installation process and finalizing that. 
you should eventually find that it then gets into this screen and then goes through a few more steps to install everything else and then you end up with a finished pc with windows on it and obviously you can then go about downloading other things hopefully you found this useful let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and check out the description to see related videos thanks for watching you've made it right to the end of the video you brilliant legend you if you've enjoyed it click that subscribe button give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions if you really enjoyed it consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.